Bonsoir. Euh, je suis la commissaire d'exposition qui a organisé l'exposition. The Exurbans, Vertigo uh, and Myths. And uh, you can visit, you uh, were uh, on the uh, other side of the uh, room. Justin Bennett is, a, is a, uh, an English artist who was asked to take part in the uh, exhibition which was organized in uh, the Dutch peri-urban uh, area uh, uh, in the uh, and I, I will uh, I will give Justin the floor and he will uh, tell us about uh, this uh, production and his experience in uh, peri-urban uh, life Justin thank you and, uh, and thank you for having invited me. I do apologize, but uh, I will will need to speak. Um, I will need to speak English. Um, it's scary to be among all these experts about the peri urbain, even though you can't agree on what peri urbain means. Uh, I'm not an expert. In fact, artists are generally generalists. Yeah, we're dr jack of all trades. We're uh, flex workers, if you like. Um, we don't, like researchers, unlike researchers, we don't try and pre uh, present objective facts. We're more interested in the things in between, the subjective things, how people feel. Um, I'm going to try and do this quickly, but I'd, I actually prepared quite a lot of things to show you, so I'm going to try and go through quickly. Uh, what I want to do is I want to talk about a, a, a a number of projects I made in the Netherlands, which is where I live, uh, which all happened in areas which I consider to be uh, peri-urbain. Uh, I'll try and find a slide. That's a good slide. This is my expert. My, I, I, I'm like this guy. Yeah, he's uh, he's my kind of like my mascot. He listens to cities. And that's what I do. That's my job, really. That's what I see my job as doing. Uh, focusing on um, the, the, the oral aspect of cities and nature as well, but specifically the urban. Um, if you like the, the soundscape, the paysage sonore. Um, so let's talk about the Netherlands. Um, when you're talking about ex-urban situations, the Netherlands, I think, is a, always going to be a special case. Firstly, because it's so densely populated, much more than France or the UK, for instance, but also because the relationship between the built environment and nature is radically different. Uh, I'd like to give you an example. This weekend, there was an announcement in the, in the newspaper that the government, the Dutch government, is investing 30 million euros to build new islands in a lake to create more nature. So in, in Holland, nature is something you build. Yeah? Architecture is also, I mean, agriculture is also something constructed. Uh, so the relationship is very different. Now, most of the places um, I have experiences of, let's just skip through. Uh, are called Venex neighborhoods. Venex, this is from the Venex Atlas, which is a very beautiful book that's just been published. Uh, Venex neighborhoods, uh, uh, it was, Venex was a policy from the 1990s to expand the, expand the residential capacity of the larger cities of the Netherlands. Uh, so they're like new towns, basically. Some of them were built on around existing villages, but a lot of them were just completely new. Some are outside uh, some are kind of attached to the cities and some are quite far outside the city boundaries. Um, in an area like the Randstad, which is Amsterdam, Utrecht, Den Haag, Rotterdam, the cities are so close together that adding these V-next neighborhoods actually sticks the cities together. And it has, 
it really makes the Randstad means a ring city, and it really makes a ring. Um, at the moment, the metro lines from Rotterdam are being extended, but one reaches The Hague already. So you see that local transport becomes an intercity transport are actually the same thing at a certain point. Um, Okay, so the first project I did was a locate was in fact that map I showed you, Leidse Rhein, which is by Utrecht. Um, this was a piece called Changing Soundscapes. Uh, I interviewed together with a theatre director, Renata Zenschnig, I interviewed uh, new inhabitants because almost everybody moved to this place. They didn't live there before. It was created in, in a few years. Uh, we interviewed them about the sounds around them, their soundscape. Uh, and, the sound, and comparing that to the sounds that they heard when they were somewhere else. So it was thinking about sounds. Um, and uh, this was how it, it was presented in schools and libraries, so it had to be childproof. So this was the place where you listen to these stories mixed with sounds. Um, as well as saying something about listening and soundscapes, it allowed us to talk about change and memory and the inhabitants' desires and expectations. I was always um, shocked to see how different people's responses were. Some people um, were very happy when they'd moved out of the city centre. They were very happy to be somewhere quiet, calm, uh, whereas others just found it dead. They missed the local shops. They missed the business on the street. Some people even complained they couldn't hear their neighbours, which was something they'd got used to. Okay. Let's go quickly. This is another Vinex place. This is Vathorst, which is by uh, Amersfoort. Um, a lot of these places are just outside the kind of the ring of infrastructure, the motorways that circle these cities. So as, as well as they're put there because they're then well connected because people can get to the to the motorway quickly. But at the same time, it tends to cut them off from the rest of the city. Uh, you know, obviously in Holland, everybody cycles, or everybody likes to cycle. But because of positioning these, these places by the motorway, you're actually cutting, cutting it off. You're actually sort of separating it and making this, this big boundary between what should be part of the city and the rest of the city. Um, Let's see, what was I going to say about that? Uh, this is actually um, about, this piece was about the kind of relationship between uh, the city and nature. Um, it turned out that the, the trees, they were cutting a lot of trees down, it had been an uh, agricultural area, and people were complaining. People were moving there, were then complaining that the trees were being cut down, and so they actually had to change some building plans. It was really like the advertisers had uh, promised that they were moving to a greener neighborhood, and the people started to take it seriously. So they were campaigning to keep some of these trees within the kind of urban structure. So I made uh, a piece. It was a, a sound walk, like an audio guide for the city, for the, for the new town which actually takes you around various trees. You listen to the sounds that actually happen inside the trees, but it's also listening to the world, as it were, through the trees. So using the trees to ampl amplify the sounds of the people and the building works around you. Um, again, it wasn't just about that. It also gave us the opportunity to talk about the relationship between the urban and the rural, about the concept of the nature in the Netherlands. Um, here's some of the trees. Uh, here's some of the, this is the map. I think walking is also very important. The, the sound walk, it implies listening, but it's also about walking. And to, to force people to walk around, what force people, to ask people to walk around a neighborhood that is really designed for cars and bicycles makes them see, the, uh, see the, the, where they live in a different way. Okay, I'm going to skip quickly to the, actually to the new, the piece I made for this exhibition, just to speed things up a little bit. I'd like another slide, yeah. Okay, so this, um, the piece I made for this, uh, this exhibition, which is called Edgelands, um, 
It came about because I was, I was working on something else in a place called Heelan, which is in the south of Holland. Heelan is very interesting because it's a, a very small town, but it's surrounded by extra urban settlements, which have been built from the beginning of the 20th century. The first one was built uh, in 1905 or something, uh, Beersdal, which was built as a colony for mine workers. The other areas were built then in the 60s and the 70s. But now, so it kind of expanded into these little villages, if you like. Uh, but now it's actually the Netherlands' fastest shrinking city. So some of these areas are being demolished or they're being thinned out. They, they, they kind of uh, get rid of blocks and create these pocket parks. Um, when I was working there, I was thinking about... Uh, Acoustic ecology, I don't know if you know the term acoustic ecology, but it's to do with the soundscape and, for instance, bioacoustics. And I wanted to take some concepts that are usually applied to natural environments and uh, use them in urban ones instead. So this idea is to concentrate on the, what's called the acoustic, acoustic niche, which means that different species, so humans but other animals, use different parts of this frequency spectrum to communicate. This is a plot of, uh, of a recording. So you're looking at, uh, this is uh, left to right is time, top to bottom is frequency, low to high sounds. These vertical lines, actually birds, there are these, line, these patterns of uh, lines above each other, that's a baby crying. You can see how much space a baby crying takes. It has to get its message across. It uses as much as possible. Uh, then on that side, you start to see a kind of a cloud, and that's a car. So the car traffic produces so much, a lot of noise that masks other communication. And the idea of the acoustic niche is that um, people and animals respond to the soundscape and change their way of uh, communicating. Uh, and it also involves obviously non-biological things like cars. Uh, anyway, so I tried to explore this in a kind of strange way. What I did was I made a piece of software that would try to listen to these different frequency bands at different times. So it would choose, uh, this is a plot of what comes out. You're going to hear it later, I hope. So sometimes I isolate just the very low sounds, which could, could come from distant traffic, but sometimes you only hear very high sounds which might come from rustling leaves or somebody walking along, footsteps, those kinds of things. So it's a bit like how your hearing works because when you're listening, you're always directing your attention to different things. So I chop up the frequencies of sound. I also chop up the spatiality of it. I'm not going to explain this, but you'll, you'll hear that I'm, I'm focusing on different parts of the... Um, of the soundscape. So I just want to say something about the, the locations because they're interesting. This is in Heel, and again, this is a neighborhood from the 70s. Uh, this is a neighborhood in, um, in Den Haag. It's uh, in, in La Haye, The Hague. It's called Epenburg, and it's separated. It's a new town that's separated from The Hague, the, the city, with this huge kind of motorway junction which produces a lot of noise. So as well as being a physical boundary, it's also a kind of an acoustic boundary to the, to the city. OK, I can do it less than that, I think. OK, this is uh, uh, some of the other locations. This is a very interesting area that I've recently discovered. This is called the, uh, the Amsterdam, when I've forgotten my thing. The Amsterdam, the, the Amsterdam Stelling, it's called. Uh, and uh, this was a, was a series of forts and waterworks which were defensive. They were built uh, at the end of the 19th century. Uh, and now this area, so lots of villages and little forts, this area marks now the edge of the, what's considered to be the peri-urban region of Rotterdam, uh, Amsterdam, sorry. So it includes some, some of these. Uh, this is a, a housing project. Project is they're quite uh, posh, I guess, upper middle class housing along a dike, very much in the countryside. Um, and this is another shot. This is somewhere slightly less pretty to be. 
Um, what interests me about this area is, although theoretically it's very, very well connected because of its proximity, it's very near Schiphol Airport, which has not only airplanes, but it also has a, very, a, a lot of international train connections from that place. It's a logistical hub. There are all these uh, you know, sort of distribution centers and things like that. It feels very, very cut off. There's not so much lo uh, local transport, public transport. You have to have a car to live there. And although much of the land is agricultural, you have a lot of noise from Schiphol. Um, so it's a very sort of strange mix of agriculture, the sound of transport, the feeling you're connected, but at the same time you're, you're somehow separated from the rest of the, the city. Um, and I'm planning to expand this research and make a, a kind of audio guide type, type piece later in the, in the year. Anyway, I hope you spend some time listening to my Dutch peri-urban soundscapes, which are in this box there, and seeing the rest of the exhibition. I'll hand over to Irene now. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Uh, we haven't got time, and so uh, please uh, take a look at the uh, guide, at this uh, little catalogue of the exhibition. There are four pieces that were designed specifically for these uh, two days. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut